Welcome to the YouTube channel of Cascadia Living Wisdom. I'm glad to see you back here again. Of course, I don't see you, you're seeing me, but I'm glad that you found your way back again to us here. Today, I want to carry further some thoughts that I shared in a recent uh, video uh, where we talked about contemplation and meditation. And in fact, I explored the broad range of things that are included within that and sketched a framework for understanding what they have in common and yet what differs between the various approaches to meditations, to meditation, I should say. But uh, one of the questions I'm often asked in response to meditation is why, if it's so important in terms of a way of making space so that we can be open to God, truly open to God, a way of making space so that we can become aware of our own true inner spaciousness, why is it? that it's not more clearly a part of the teaching of Jesus. Of course, Jesus is known to have been a man of prayer, and he was always praying, living continuously in relationship to the one he called Father. And so there may well have been contemplative elements to that, and so we could say Jesus practiced contemplative prayer. I'm sure that was part of the spectrum of prayer methods, prayer ways of being that were his. But why didn't he teach it? Why didn't we hear more about uh, contemplation, the importance of it, or meditation? And I think the answer is that it wasn't, in fact, central to the life of Jesus but something more fundamental that captures the essence of both meditation and contemplation was central to him and to his life, to his path, and to the path that he invites us who seek to follow him to follow and to embrace. And that's something more, something more than meditation is detachment. Detachment is a radical posture. It's unpopular. I understand why it's not taught. We've been talking about attachments and the importance of them, but what they invite is release. And that releasing is the act of detaching. Let's just quickly review again then what an attachment is. When Jesus says, leave everything and follow me, leave even your father and mother, Leave your family, leave those who you love, leave everything that you most deeply love and follow me. What's he asking for? Well, this shouldn't be interpreted literally. He's not saying if you're living with your family and caring for them, leave them, abandon them. Certainly it's not that. A detachment is not a detachment from the thing or person object of your attachment. It's detaching from them in the uh, release of your apparent love for them or for God or for things, in your apparent love for those things, but it's really masking loving them for your sake. Let me just say that again, because this is quite important. The essence of an attachment is an investment of energy in another for our sake. It's loving God for my sake. It's loving and investing in my image, my accomplishments, my money, my possessions, my hopes, my plans for my sake. That's the essence of detachment. So detachment is not indifference. It's not not caring. It's a purification of our love so that we can truly engage with love. 
Meister Eckhart is the person in the Christian tradition who most clearly taught this. As I say, it's very, very clear in the life of Jesus, the way Jesus lived was a path of letting go, of detaching from everything. Meister Eckhart says, it's important that we detach from everything, even God. In fact, especially God. Now, what's he saying? It's releasing the investments in God for my sake. That is my expectations, my hopes. It's using God. Those things are idolatrous. It's loving God for God's sake. It's loving others for God's sake. It's a purification of desire. Well, that's a complex thought, but perhaps you begin to see how radical it is. This was what Jesus was inviting when he invites those of us who follow him to do just that, to follow, to leave all lesser loves, all impurities of love, to love nothing for our sake, to love everything for God's sake. So detachment is the radical path. Perhaps we could say, and this is the way in which Meister Eckhart describes it, it's the more direct path to the knowing of the inner spaciousness that is ours because we're children of God. Detachment doesn't so much then create space. Meditation doesn't so much create space or contemplation as allow us to recognize what is our essential self, the truth of our being which is emptiness. It is therefore spaciousness, expansiveness. And it's recognizing that as we let go of the things that we grasp, because that act of grasping is a way of enclosing ourselves that cuts ourselves off from our essence. I've talked about some of these things before. When we were talking about my most recent book, I Am the Love That Flows Through Me. And we talked about the importance of our identity reflecting the true lightness of our being. We were talking about releasing, letting go of our attachments to things that make our identity more substantial, more real to cover over our vulnerability. Those are the kinds of things that we're invited in this path of radical detachment that goes beyond meditation, that more directly cuts to the essence of how is it that we are to know the truth of God within us, our truth, the truth of our fundamental identity, our essential self, our naked self. How are we to do that? By detachment, by release, by emptying. It's only in that emptying that we come to know our spaciousness. Well, this is a hard path, as I say. I think it's the essential spiritual practice it's certainly the essence of Christ following. It's unquestionably the core of what it is, therefore, to be a Christian, one who follows the Christ. But it's a hard path. I know why it's not more popular. I know why we would rather do things, even spend 20 minutes a day meditating. The essence of meditation and contemplation is that self-emptying. It is release. It gets us there, but by a more indirect path. The direct path, radical detachment, letting go. We'll talk more about this in the future because it is a hard path to follow. But I hope that at this point, 
you might feel ready to contemplate this path. You might listen more keenly to the inner invitation. Perhaps it's emerged in terms of some resonance within you as I've spoken. Perhaps you've heard an invitation. Perhaps you have a sense of, yes, I do recognize that this is the path that I'm called to walk. Consider your response to that. Thank you for being here today. We thank you for coming back every time that you do. Uh, I also recognize that it's hard to get notifications about these the uh, postings of new videos. Please do become a subscriber if you like what you're finding. That increases the chances that you'll um, receive notification. Please tell your friends about it. We are a very small organization. We don't have any money for advertising. So we can't buy the access to ads that would bring people to our YouTube channel and to our website. We're counting on you. If you like what you find, please tell others who you think will appreciate it. And we appreciate, I appreciate your doing that. So looking forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks for being here today. Bye for now. And be well.